Good morning. It is Tuesday morning and time for devotions. A um, couple things. I uh, would appreciate your prayers for Dave Ostrander, who will be having some surgery on Friday. Uh, I did not say that at uh, church. I had asked him if it was okay if I did. I went up front, didn't write it down, read through the list of prayer concerns, and uh, managed to miss that completely. So my apologies to Dave, and I've already apologized to him. And uh, again, invite you to uh, lift him up in prayer this week as he heads toward surgery on Friday. Um, <clears throat> also would remind folks that we will be doing a... Um, on Thursday night, uh, there's going to be a review of what's been going on in our church audit. Not financial audit, but an audit of the uh, function of the church and where it is that we are, where we've been, and where it is that we would like to go. So that's going to take place on Thursday night. That's going to start at 6.30. Uh, would love to have people here in person. That probably is uh, would be helpful. You can hear it that way. Uh, we have had two two groups within uh, the committee that's been doing that. We've had a small group from the church. We've also had a group of folks from um, uh, several other churches who have heard uh, the details that we've lifted up and are going to, on Thursday night, be making some suggestions for us as to directions they feel uh, from an outside view looking in, which is always helpful to get. Um, some of the options that we may have as a church. What uh, what would be good for us to do? We will then uh, gather together again in the, the committee from the church uh, and having listened to other things that uh, you all would like to share, uh, we'll make some decisions as we look ahead to the pastoral transition. Uh, we can We'll be giving this information to our incoming pastor, who is also at this point our district superintendent. And hopefully uh, this will uh, help us, help to lead us into the, uh, the next uh, few years. And uh, I will not be here, but uh, I do continue to say we because um, this church has certainly has been a part of my life and, my, and Kathy's life. And uh, we definitely have a love for it, and we will be continuing to lift it up in prayer. So know that uh, from that standpoint, you will certainly have our hearts and our support. Um, so anyway, uh, this, uh, this will be on the, the Facebook um, page uh, on Thursday night. You can watch it then. Uh, you'll be able to watch it, obviously, afterwards as well encourage you to uh, to do that and take a look and uh, if you are a part of the church. All right, well, today we're moving into a new uh, subject and the subject matter for this week are crucial choices. And I would invite you now to join with me in our invocation. Lord God, you who are the source of all truth, wisdom, justice, and love, Lead me through this time of worship and throughout this day of service to you. Help me constantly to rest my life upon the eternal foundations of your love and presence. Save me from haste and confusion, from wrongful desire and the net of evil. Through the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, enlighten, instruct, and guide me all the day long. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we're going to be reading from the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verses 14 through 28. They have entered into the land. The, uh, the Lord has delivered it into their hands after the exodus uh, and after their 40 years in the wilderness. And so Joshua, as the leader now, Moses is gone. Joshua is establishing a mindset and and a functionality for the Israelites in uh, in their newfound land and really encouraging them and and in a sense warning them you know what it is that you do is of significance here what it is that you decide is of significance here 
Uh, anyway, beginning in uh, verse 14 of chapter 24, uh, he's instructing all of the Israelites. They have gathered there. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did these great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we all will, yeah, Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and he took a large stone and set it up there under an oak in the sanctuary of the Lord. Joshua said to all the people, See, this stone shall be a witness against us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord that he spoke to us. Therefore, it shall be a witness against you if you deal falsely with your God. So Joshua sent the people away to their inheritances. May God add his blessing to this reading from his word. As we look at this passage, uh, a couple things that are worth noting. Um, in, in the English translation, and I, I'm not sure how it works in the Hebrew, and I doubt, but I could be wrong. Okay, so uh, I, I really I never took a Hebrew class. But I doubt that the, uh, the difference in punctuation or the difference in capitalization uh, probably appears there, although it, it may, it may very well. Um, the, uh, there is a differentiation, certainly in the English translations at least, between the gods. Uh, God, the Father, is a capital G. Uh, the gods of the Amorites and the gods of the Egypt and the gods that they had worshipped at one point um, are, uh, is a small g. So there's that differentiation, at least in English, um, and uh, but I do think it's worth you know it's worth noting that. Um, fascinating, fascinating thing, uh, because as you get to this point, the people have are living now. They've conquered through God. I mean, God consistently performs this continuation of uh, of miracles for them to set them up in this land in which they are now living. Uh, really important uh, bunch of stuff. However, it would appear as we get toward the end here, and Joshua is saying to the people of Israel, get rid of the, of the uh, false gods that you still possess from clear back in Egypt. So apparently, now mind you, these are the people who 40 years later are a generation that actually never was in Egypt. But their parents who came out of Egypt, at least some of them, must have carried with them these, you know, and probably small, uh, maybe valuable, uh, you know, gods. When they left, they despoiled the Egyptians, if you recall. 
And so the Egyptians gave them all kinds of things to go. They, they left with a, a, a pretty substantial amount of wealth. Um, they, uh, they had, the Egyptians had gone through so much through the plagues that probably many of them were uh, quite eager to get rid of the, of the Hebrews. Um, the other side is that it, we're told that God inclined their hearts to the Israelites. And so uh, they gave them these valuable things. Well, certainly one of the things that would have been valuable uh, would have been the, you know, some small statues uh, of foreign gods that they were not to mess with. They should have gotten rid of them long since. Now, whether Joshua is saying this just in case there are some still around or whether he knows that there are some still around, but he is absolutely positively saying to them, you have a choice to make this day. Are you going to be the people of God or are you not? And if you're not, then make that decision. But if you are, make that decision. And uh, so there is still question about where, you know, potentially at least where the hearts of the people are at. Well, what does that say to us today? And I think that's kind of the real theme that I want to bring up. It's a crucial decision, and you have to make that decision as well. What's the focus of your life? What is that going to be? What is your God, small g, or God, capital G, going to be? Are you going to worship the Lord? Or are you going to focus your life on something else? Wealth. You know, that's, that's something that uh, people all over the place, uh, you know, uh, are after, certainly. Power, again, one of those things that's out there. You know, we don't, uh, we don't really uh, perceive ourselves to be worshiping all these other gods, small g. Apparently, though, there had been enough of that going on that people knew what the gods of the Egyptians. Why would you even talk about that? Why would you teach your kids that? Because, again, these are the kids of the people who left Egypt. And then the Amorites. Why in the world would anyone in their right mind begin to worship the gods of the Amorites when they had just been defeated by the God of Israel? And yet they did. We know that historically. You know, the very next book in the Bible is Judges. And, and it kind of picks up, and it is... It, it's, you know, not just the next book, it's a chronological progression. And, and you have the people of Israel falling into sin, worshiping, you know, foreign gods, the gods of the Amorites. And, uh, and it's like this ridiculous thing. And yet it was something that people did. And so Josh was holding this up and saying, you got to choose. And of course, the people say, you know, and, and someone probably said, I'm going to serve God, the God of the Israelites. And some are going, I'm going to serve. Mm, I want to serve, you know. Um, but do we do that? Do we do that on Sunday morning? You know, when we're there to focus on God and to listen to God and to listen for God and to just simply worship and give ourselves to God, is that what we're really thinking about? Or are we thinking about Oh man, tomorrow's Monday. I've got to got to go back to work. I've got this big deal going, or I've got this small deal going, or I don't know if I'm going to have a job after tomorrow, or you know, should I be going to look at another new job? And 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 we uh, we shift off into a focus, which is a form of worship, guys. We shift off into a focus on all these other things. You know, a lot of times uh, in our lives we are so distracted from working God, from working, from worshiping God by all the other things that are going on in our lives. And, and the focus on those things could be construed, in a sense, as worship. Even if it's fear, even if it's terror, even if it's discomfort, even if it's uh, you know, something the negative. But as we focus on it, uh, you know, I, realistically, if you look at the Gods of the Old Testament, um, one of the standard things is, is sacrifice of, of children. And uh, that wasn't something that most people probably looked forward to. But it was something they did out of fear. Now, certainly uh, Joshua appeals to that fear in them 
remember, this is before Jesus came on the scene. This is before God's forgiveness has been established in a visible way. Um, God had certainly set up the, uh, uh, the sacrificial system as a means of obtaining forgiveness, a recognition of our sin or their sin, recognition of the sin, and then a means of dealing with it. Uh, it, it wasn't, uh, you know, it was the same kind of thing as when John the Baptist comes along and says, baptism or repentance is not enough just to pay for the sin. You've got to be sorry for it, too. And, uh, and, and what that sorrow brings about in a change of action. So, uh, you know, Joshua is, um, is holding this up to them, and he's, he's saying, you know, don't think that God's just going to go, oh, it's okay. They're mine. You know, they're my favorites. I love them. And uh, because if God, capital G, is not your God, then who is? What is? And, uh, you know, you're going to serve somebody. Bob Dylan, you know, did a, did a song. It was, uh, you got to serve somebody. And um, I've talked about that before. But, you know, he sings, it may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're going to serve somebody. And Josh was holding this up to them. And he's saying, you cannot serve God and these other gods. Later on in the New Testament, we hear you cannot serve God and what, mammon? Or you can't serve God and anything else. You know, money, power. You can't serve both those things. And so you have to make a choice. And that choice is yours to make. But you have to make a choice. And, you know, the reality is this isn't just a one-time choice. You know, they're establishing the kingdom on this day, if you will. And, and what direction it's going to take. But it really, even then, was not a one-time choice, was it? It was a permanent choice that had to be made over and over and over and over again. And, uh, and the same thing is true for us. You know, well, we've been talking. What's occupied your mind? Have you been hanging on my every word? Uh, I'm not that good a speaker. I, I don't think I have that power to cause people to hang on my every word. So what are the things that are stepping in? Well, we're talking about this passage of Scripture when we're talking about a relationship with God. What are the things that are popping into your head? What are the things that are distracting you, that are pulling you away? You know, what are the small G gods in your life that are, uh, are being thrown in your path to trip you up? Because that's how Satan works. And so every time, you know, every time that as you're watching your step, you realize there's something laying in wait to trip you up, you know, choose God, capital G. You know, choose you this day. Tomorrow, choose you this day. And then the day after that, choose you this day. Because that's the reality. And the, and the wonderful thing is that we can attest to with absolute certainty because Jesus came into the world to save us, you know, uh, is that we, in fact, can find forgiveness. Because of what Jesus did, because of his death, his life, his sacrificial death, his uh, atoning death, which purchases our forgiveness, uh, his resurrection and his ascension, because of those things, we can be forgiven. And so it's not like, um, you know, when we suddenly realize we, you know, we've been walking a, a wrong path and we have not lived up to our claim that, uh, I, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We haven't lived up to that. And, and yet God says, okay, come back to me, come back to me and, um, uh, and I will give you forgiveness and I will give you new life. Um, repentance is a part of that too. Don't ever think it's not. But uh, just like as this nation is forming, this entity, this unit, this person, which is a whole nation, is making a decision to follow God. And, and truthfully, what we see is this constant ebb and flow as you go through judges of, of 
and turning to God, then getting comfortable, crashing, then turning to God and getting comfortable and crashing. And you see God all the way through it, forgiving and calling people back. But it's a national entity. It is, it is less oftentimes personal, although the judges that are raised up are individuals. But in comparison to what Jesus does in each of our lives as individuals, it's a deeper and a more meaningful thing. So anyway, bottom line, make a choice today. Make a choice for today. Make a choice today for forever, but make the same choice tomorrow. You know, as for me, I will choose to serve the Lord, the capital G God of my life, of all of creation, and uh, that's what I'm going to strive after. And I'm not going to get distracted by all the small G gods that are floating around in my life. And Lord, we ask you to take those things. We ask you now to take those things, point them out to us, cause us to recognize them in such a way that we would repent and turn from those things and follow you. May it be so in your life today. Make those choices. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.